Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and welcome to the start of our F1 1999 career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the season opener once more in Albert Park, Australia. This probably has been one of the most anticipated seasons I've ever had on an F1 game. Of course, if you missed out on the full 1998 season, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. We had a fun first season uh, with the Arrows team. We learned a lot about this game, about these old V10 cars with the groove tyres, and I am very, very excited to be jumping in with an all-new season. As you could probably tell by the title and by the thumbnail, we have joined the Jordan Formula 1 team. Now, Heintoud Frentzen, actually, with Jordan in 99, had one of the greatest underdog campaigns you will ever see in Formula 1. He narrowly missed out on the championship by brutal consistency, I think only winning one or two races over the course of the season so maybe just maybe we can have a similar run this season but of course yeah this is a continuation of our 1998 career mode so of course Eddie Irvine leaving Formula One as the world champion there has meant there's been quite a mix up and a few drivers aren't where you'd expect them to be as we head into this new season McLaren they keep their lineup of David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen but Ralph Schumacher has joined his brother at Ferrari there. Of course, we have replaced Ralph uh, down at Jordan. We are going to be teammates with Giancarlo Fisichella, who ran arguably the best campaign last year of anyone. Again, just a bit like Frentzen's IRL season in 1999 there. He was just very, very consistent, and it meant he waltzed off to an easy P5 at the end of the championship there. Further names a bit further down the order. Uh, you can see Jacques Villeneuve has gone to BAR. Of course, they're a new team uh, ready for this new season. Uh, for, for some reason, Daniel Ricciardo uh, is at Williams for some reason that still is eluding me. But there might be a couple of little things still with this mod as well. And... We've even changed the calendar up just a little bit. So Australia will still be our season opener. We're going to be heading then back to Malaysia, of course. I'm going to make sure I turn off safety cars this season. Then we head to China, Spain, Monaco, Canada. The return of the French Grand Prix. Sadly, it's not Magni Corps. It is going to have to be uh, Paul Ricard. Austria, Silverstone, Hungary before then the uh, the summer break there. And then obviously Belgium, Italy, Hockenheim with Japan. Mexico returning to the calendar. And the Brazilian Grand Prix once more will be our season finale. So yeah, really, really looking forward to getting back into this season. Let's do this thing. Well, I will make sure I leave a link down in the description below to the mod as well. If you guys are interested in trying it out. But here we go then, our first lap in anger with our all-new Jordan car immediately on the run down towards Zone 1. You get the sense of just how much more power um, we have got underneath us here. Um, yeah, 1999 Jordan actually were pretty competitive over the course of the season. They didn't have the greatest qualifying pace, um, but they were pretty good over a race distance. Uh, so were the likes of Stewart actually as well. Which is going to be interesting to see how a championship fight ends up this year. Uh, now, obviously, Schumacher leading in his Ferrari. i got no idea, of course, which Schumacher that is now. So I guess there's a little bit of jeopardy down on Marinello's side of things over this season. Could there be some beef between the brothers as well there? But yeah, Ferrari were a lot more competitive uh, with McLaren in 1999. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll have another good championship fight on for us of course it goes to show just how good eddie irvine was last year uh how his consistency really did help him out and well he's done a rosberg before rosberg made it cool retired from formula one up on top but as we make our way then through these final couple of corners i do love the fact we're kind of making our own f1 alternate history with this series is making our way though through the final couple of turns never can get the power down through that final corner and we almost go and drop it there as we get a horrible run up towards the start-finish line, though. But I think it is P8 on the grid. 
Well, as I said then, Stewart and Jordan, probably going to be two of the teams that can challenge McLaren and Ferrari at the top of the table. And that's exactly what's happened here. But Ralph Schumacher, a debut pole position for his new Ferrari team. It is a Schumacher front row lockout here. I wonder how many times we're going to say that over the course of this season. Giancarlo Fisichella will line up P3 ahead of Mika Hakkinen. We, yeah, we kind of found ourselves in a bit of no man's land in the end. Uh, we were lucky that we were able to beat out Heinz Howard Frentzen. Uh, and it looks like now as well, Damon Hill has returned to Williams uh, in place of Daniel Ricciardo. Forgot to mention at the start as well, Mika Salo, Nick Heidfeld, two new drivers to the Formula 1 grid. Quickly though, before we get into this video, I want to thank all of the names you see on your screen. Without their continued support of the channel, none of the work we do here would be possible. And if you want to get your name featured on this list, you can click the join button or click the Patreon link down in my description below and support the channel from just £1 a month. You will also get access to weekly updates about everything going on behind the scenes and also occasionally some early pre reviews on videos so yeah a massive thank you to my youtube members and my patreon supporters and let's get back to the video <laughs> It's finally time once again to begin what promises to be another thrilling season of Formula One action. Pre-season time, subject of so much discussion in recent weeks, mean nothing now as the cars line up to battle it out for points once again. So let's get this season underway. Welcome to the Australian Grand Prix. Just south of Melbourne's downtown business centre is the one and only Albert Park circuit. 3.3 miles of public roads, closed for the weekend of course, make for a bumpy circuit with little undulation. There are 16 corners around the lake and a couple of good passing opportunities here as well. Thanks in part to the DRS zones into turns 1, 3 and 13. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Well, it looks like we've been promoted up one spot already then, is David Coulthard somehow is taking a grid penalty before the opening round of the year. But yeah, myself and Jim Carlo Fisichella as teammates, it's hopefully going to prove as a lineup that can score good solid points week in and week out there and maybe, just maybe, spring a surprise if Ferrari and McLaren are still a bit unreliable. That being said, though, the Stewarts, they were very quick as well, so it's going to be interesting to see how they get on this weekend. But waiting then on the five red lights here in Albert Park. It's the lights out, and away we go then. And clearly my bad starts from last season aren't going to be going anywhere either, as Fisichella doesn't get off particularly well. Hakkinen caught napping a little bit as well. as Oh, we've already got Hakkinen out, and there's cars spinning everywhere. And once more, Albert Park, Australia. There is chaos down at Turn 1. Well, we're really going to have to try and piece this all together then. Hakkinen down in Turn 1. Yeah, one of the Stewarts down is inside. Take a look. That must have obviously been Magnussen, who tried to go down the inside of absolutely everybody through that first corner. Somehow, my teammate getting away with it there. One of the Williams has gone in and have been involved in the shunt as well. And I think we've already lost about six cars from this Grand Prix. There is both Williams perhaps out. Off the start of this race. Yep, both Williams gone. As well as a plethora of other cars here. So chaos to kickstart the new season. Would would we expect anything different? We are already down to just 14 runners then in this Grand Prix. So at the rate we're going, uh, everyone's going to be out of this race by about lap three. But a carnage, absolute carnage to kick off the Australian Grand Prix. Um, however, this was quite a common sight back in the late 90s and early 2000s. So I can't say I'm too shocked. Well, I'm not going to peel into the pit lane then at the end of lap one. We don't know how good the tyre life is going to be here. And I'll be honest as well, I don't really want to try to abuse the, how good the tyre wear was last season. You know, as much as we did there. But Ferrari, of course, got out of that one completely free. Uh, they're, well, 
IRL future driver and Rubens Barrichello now up at a P3. As, yeah, McLaren once again seem to be in the doldrums. Hakkinen cannot finish races to save his life. Or well, clean up then for that incident has taken quite a few laps here, but it has meant now that Mika Salo on his F1 debut for Arrows all the way up at a seventh place early on. So just like we saw quite a few times last season, there is going to be an opportunity here for a lot of the backmarkers to potentially score some early points in the championship. But I believe it is still Ralph Schumacher uh, that leads the way. Unfortunately, yeah, there's no way of telling uh, which Schumacher is which without taking a look at their helmets. But as we make our way uh, at the final corner, desperately got to try and build up some heat back in the tyres. But we are finally green flag racing once again then. Here in Alba Park, Australia. I'm hoping this time around we get more than one corner out of it. As immediately the Schumacher brothers hounding each other. We've got to hope that we've got some pace over Rubens Barrichello. Because I'd love to see a Jordan on the podium. Oh, we've got another one gone. Who's that now out of the Grand Prix? Well, I believe this is Zach Villeneuve then. As he makes his way in his new Arrows car out onto the back straight. Just gets a little bit too tail happy. And his first race out is over. Still not exactly sure what Jacques Villeneuve was thinking heading over to the Arrows team. So we've got more yellow flags out. Don't say we've just lost another one in this Grand Prix. But yeah, to go from Williams after one pretty poor season to a backmarker team like Arrows, clearly believe they were on a lot more of an upward trajectory than they have been. Um, but yeah, for us though, we're just trying to build up some momentum, build up some confidence in the car. There's David Cooper now up into seventh place. Team already trying to recommend a new strategy, but I think we'll stick with what we've got. Cooper though is up and past Johnny Herbert, so not going to be long, I don't think, before the Scotsman gets up towards my gearbox. We definitely don't quite have the pace to match Fizio Barrichello at the moment. And just to confirm as well, it is Michael Schumacher at the front of the field. Ralph Schumacher, just you can see, trying to keep up. So I know I was getting questions about it last season as well. Uh, DRS does not affect top speed in these cars, as someone else appears to have had issues. I believe that's cool, Thard. What's happened? I'm riding on board then with the sole remaining McLaren car in this Grand Prix. Down in towards Turn 1. Just gets a little bit too heavy on the loud pedal. And DC then is going to go for a very, very unusual spin. Well, everyone trying to adapt to their new Formula 1 cars this season. Clearly a lot of people struggling with it. Where, I mean, yeah, this race has already been carnage. We're only on lap 7. What that mistake has done by DC. That was really meant that we can just focus on our own lap times. Not going to be under pressure from the likes of Herbert or De La Rosa behind, I don't think. So we'll just try and see how much we're losing to Giancarlo. One of the things I've always got to try and readjust to when I come back to these classic car series uh, is just how late on the brakes you can go as well, where these things weigh nothing at all. You really can break, you know, a good 50 metres later into a corner. And to give you a rough idea then of how we're stacking up relative to our front runners, uh, Michael Schumacher that lap, 1.6 seconds clear of myself. And that was a new PB for me. I think Johnny Herbert then might be a little bit out of his depth here because he's going three seconds a lap slower than myself and really, really holding up Pedro De La Rosa behind him. But this is the other thing that I love with these older style cars. It really does feel like such a confidence game. You know, suddenly now, the gap to Barrichello coming down just a little bit again. Is it just as everyone kind of gains and loses confidence in what's underneath them? As the tyres continue to evolve there, as Giancarlo then one of, if not the first car, into the pit lane George this afternoon. In the in the Michael Schumacher also into the pit lane then, so it is going to be Ralph well, Rubens and myself out. The best in lap you can. But I'm happy to take these tyres just that little bit longer. There we go, Ralph Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello into the pit lane one lap further on. Oh, we've got a VSC. That is a bit of a shame. It's got another one, eh? Who's that now out of the Grand Prix? This is never a particularly good look then, as we can see one of the Arrows cars side by side with David Coulthard. And Coulthard gets a slide. And Mika Sala on his debut with nowhere to go, as cars then proceed to stream past him. Both Arrows cars out of the Australian Grand Prix. Well, always nice to try and get some laps led under our belt here. But yeah, Pedro de la Rosa is definitely holding up our teammate Fisichella as well. Oh. 
Uh, but yeah, Barrichello's come out about three seconds ahead of him, so I think we need to stay out one more to try and get the gap over Pedro to what we need. But this could be a good way to get ahead of Fisichella. Yeah, this Jordan as well, definitely hungrier on his fuel than our old Arrows car was. Um, but yeah, when we pit, this is going to be really, really nip and tuck between myself and our teammate. Speaking of which, though, I think now is the time to peel it in. I don't want to risk losing time to Giancarlo here. If we've got an opportunity to try and get the better of him, I will always going to try and take it there. Always forget how slow the old pit lane was here in Australia. As there will go Michael Schumacher in his Ferrari. Right, well, once we know where Rubens Barrichello is, this should give us an idea of just how close we are to Giancarlo. And the answer is I think he's going to be very... But Fisichella has got the better of me on the exit of the pit lane. We're going to bring the car back into its normal fuel mode. But yeah, the strategy I wanted to play hasn't quite worked. We have, however, got a massive gap over Ricardo Rossit, who is now into P5, P6. sorry. However, we have opted for a softer compound tyre than Giancarlo. We're going to be on fresher tyres as well, pretty much to the end of this Grand Prix. I reckon there's still a fight on our hands. Well, looking at it at the moment, then, the gap to Giancarlo pretty much staying even. Cool far behind us, though. I feel for him it might depend on how easily he gets around Ricardo Rossit. As Schumacher, once again, pushing that fastest lap lower and lower. So whether Cool far wants to try and go for that as well, the bonus point could be quite handy. on what has been a terrible start to the year for McLaren. But yeah, I just want to try and get that gap down to Fisichella. I want to have a battle with him towards the end of this race. Oh, we've got another one gone. Down to 11 runners. And this time round, then it's Ralph Schumacher in front of me, who's out of the Grand Prix. So Ferrari's 1-2 dreams go up in smoke there. Ralph Schumacher leaves us with just 11 cars left in this Grand Prix. And the 1-2 dream for the brothers is over. That certainly puts a lot more weight then on the battle between myself and Giancarlo towards the end of this race. Because now that's for a podium then as Rubens Barrichello and Stewart having the dream start to the year all the way up in P2. But again, Coulthard now already looks to be trying to make a move on Rossit. And pretty much as soon as I say that, it looks like Coulthard has completed the move on Ricardo Rossit. So we're going to be monitoring that gap towards the end of the race. He needs to be close to two seconds a lap faster. Um, but that isn't out of the realms of possibility for that McLaren. Well, I think Giancarlo then has either got a problem or is having to start saving some fuel. Because Rubens Barrichello, that gap is staying pretty level. But we are also running very, very low on extra fuel right now. So I wonder if Giancarlo is having a fuel save as well. But I want to be ahead of him before I have to start fuel saving. There's now De La Rosa back into sixth place there. 30 seconds behind. Oh, we got more yellows. Is that Barrichello gone? Yes, it is! Barrichello in the wall! So now suddenly both Jordans are on for a podium. I can only assume he's done what Coulthard did earlier on. We only catch it late, but yep, Rubens Barrichello, exactly the same thing as David Coulthard did earlier on in the Grand Prix. And under seemingly no pressure at all, a huge podium to kickstart the year will go missing for Stewart. Well, I tell you what, I know Albert Park is often a race of attrition, but this is next level so far this weekend. Pretty much everyone has made a mistake at some point or another. If you haven't, well, you're on the podium at this point. Um, but yeah, Michael Schumacher with a 25 second lead at the front of the field. I'm sure Ferrari slightly worried about the reliability after Ralph Schumacher's demise. Yeah, Coulthard now might be on for an easy P4. Oh, and Coulthard had to peel into the pit lane as well, so he did get some front wing damage in that incident. And yep, sorry, uh, Barrichello even has had to peel into the pit lane. Sometimes I get muddled up between the number twos. Oh, another one's gone. Who's that now out of the race? As we are lucky to hang on to that. Oh, no, Rubens Barrichello, he's come out of the pit lane. And the engine has shut off on him, and that is a heartbreaking end to a race that up until two laps ago looks to be one of the best of his career so far. And there we go, that confirms if you are still running in this Grand Prix now, you are guaranteed to score a point here. Top five cars separated by a minute, but yeah, that mistake for us, I think basically confines us to P3 here. Not gonna risk the fuel to try and close in on our teammate, but yeah, Rubens Barrichello 
That is a heartbreak. Maybe that was why he span a lap earlier, because of a technical gremlin. Well, what I'm learning late on in the day, then, with just a handful of laps to go, lean fuel is making me quicker. It actually makes it easier to control the car on the exits of the corners, and it's allowing us to close in on Fisichella and save the fuel we need to. Towards the end of the day, the gap now back to just two seconds. I'm not giving up. I know I said I had, but now I'm not. Oh, I can see two cars going wheel to wheel up in front. That does not do Fisichella right any good at the moment. Hopefully, they might just get out of both our way in one go. Looks like one of them's jumped out of his way, but I'm not going to quite get there. It is Pedro Della Rosa, as he'll make the move on Shinji Nakano then, under those blue flag conditions. Nakano will get out of my way then, as Pedro practically pushing Giancarlo along. We take plenty of curb as we try to get out onto the back straight there. And now Della Rosa is going to let me by as well with a bit of luck. He just about will. But the gap to Giancarlo now about one second as that is not the line to take through the chicane. Luckily, we'll get away with it and we don't even get a warning. Well, I believe it might literally just be Jordan and Sauber they are going to be the teams to get both cars to the finish here. So Jordan looking for two dependable drivers that can bring the car home. Looks to be exactly what they've got here. But Fisichella still my slightly more experienced teammate. Just able to keep me at arm's length with two laps to go. Well, everyone's tired starting to fall off then as we are about to kick off the final lap of the Australian Grand Prix. And what a race of attrition this one has turned into there. Fisichella again can't put the power down out of the final corner. And again will just allow me to get a little bit closer. But we are now under on fuel. So we're going to have to keep managing it around this final lap. And... Trying to make a move there, but tyres seem to be going at the moment. And you just see immediately how much Fisichella can pull away. I do not want to risk running out of fuel towards the line. I've got no idea whether Giancarlo is in the same position as myself and maybe will run out as we get back round towards the finish. But Michael Schumacher, he has absolutely dominated this one after a tough 1998 season. I apologise for that line. That was absolutely atrocious. But after, yeah, a tough old 1998, he watched his Ferrari teammate become world champion. A dream that one day he hopes to live. He's going to kickstart the 1999 campaign in the perfect way possible. Michael Schumacher, he will win here in Albert Park. But for Jordan, though, behind, I don't think we really could have asked for a whole lot more today. Really, really have been quick and consistent. We've had a good battle as teammates as well. We've just been so close to Giancarlo, but never quite able to get past him when all is said and done. As we make our way through the final couple of corners, I believe, though, this will mean that Jordan are going to be leading the Constructors' Championship, which is absolutely fantastic as well. Fisichella out of the final corner. He will come home for P2, and we will follow him in P3. Another superb Australian Grand Prix comes to an end. And it's a thoroughly deserved victory. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today, and a stunning win for Ferrari. Well, there we go then. Michael Schumacher, he didn't quite take pole position, but he did take the full 25 points this weekend there. And honestly, he seemed like one of the only drivers where it was never in doubt. P1 for the German to kickstart the new season there. Giancarlo Fisichella lines up P2 ahead of myself there, making it a double Jordan podium 
to kickstart the campaign. Coulthard, 16th to 4th, actually looks like a very, very good drive, but there's no way he should have finished behind the Jordan cars here. He probably should have been battling uh, with Schumacher when all is said and done there. With Herbert, Rossett, Verstappen, Janay, De La Rosa, and Shinji Nakano all seeing the checkered flag there. Both Salvas, both Minardas, and both Jordans. The only teams to get both cars to the finish line there. Um, with, as you can see, Barrichello, Ralph Schumacher, Salo, Wielner, Magnussen, Heinz Halfrensen, Damon Hill, Mika Hakkinen, Alex Wurtz, and Nick Heidfeld all failing to see the checkered flag this weekend. I think that's the highest race of attrition we've ever had, uh, with the exception of Malaysia last season. And that means taking a look at the Constructors' Championship. Jordan, yep, eight points clear at the top of the table there as Minardi in the lofty heights of P5 tied with Benetton. But Stewart, Arrows and Williams... The only team not to score this weekend. Thank you all so much for watching, though. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. Really, really happy that our classic F1 career mode is back. And yeah, we'll return very soon when Formula 1 heads to Sepang. You guys do not want to miss that.